Welcome to another Kling AI video tutorial. Today I am testing the new model released by Kling AI called O1, which is a unified multimodal video model that uses natural language to combine videos, images, elements, and other multimodal descriptions to precisely understand your intentions, making the creative process more intuitive and efficient. To get started, go to the Kling AI website, then use the Try Now button and log in. On the left, you should see a new button for the Kling O1 model, just above the image and video generation section. It is above those because this new model can do both images and videos, but in today's video, I will cover only video generation. You also have a quick intro here that you can watch to see what it is capable of, but I will try to cover as many use cases as I can in this video. You have multiple tabs for easy access, but you can do almost everything from the default elements tab using prompts. You can upload three types of resources, images, videos, and elements. From here, you can choose image or video generation. I will keep it on video because for images, I use Nano Banana Pro. So let's start with the first use case, the image or element reference. Click on this plus sign, and now it lets you upload or select from history an image or video. I will go with image this time, and I will use this woman sitting at the table. Wait for it to finish uploading, and when it is ready, you will see it says image 1, and it adds a green tag in the prompt. You can type your prompt after or before that tag. It is easier to move around using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard, but you can also delete it with backspace. So basically, you write your prompt, and then you need to reference this image. You cannot drag it into your prompt, even though that would be cool. You need to type the at sign, and then all the images you uploaded will appear there, in this case, just the first image. When I click on it, it is selected and appears in the prompt. It is very easy to tag these images inside the prompt. Let me delete these and do an actual example. I will add another image. This time, I have this purple can with grape juice. You can see that as soon as I add it, it adds the tag. Now let's write the prompt. I will say, the woman from, and here I need image one since that is the woman, so I add the at sign and select image one. Then I say, picks up the drink from image two from the table and drinks from it and smiles after. Keep in mind, I show you exactly what I get on the first try. I am not selecting the best or anything since it is not in my interest to promote it. I just want to show what it can do and what it cannot do. For the model, we only have this one. Maybe we will get O2 or others in the future. For professional mode, you can see we have durations smaller and bigger, from 3 to 10 seconds, though 7 to 10 seconds seem to be only for VIP. You can also select the ratio you want and how many generations or outputs you want at once you can see how much it costs to generate depending on your settings. If I select four seconds, it is a little cheaper, so play with the settings. I will click generate, and then depending on what you do, it can take between two to four minutes from what I saw for five seconds of video. And we have our first generation of our woman drinking juice. So she uses the can correctly, but some of the small text can get lost. The logo is kind of visible and her face seems consistent, but when you have small text, it might get lost. It also depends on how fast it moves in the scene. You can do a closer shot of the product to get better text so it has more pixels to work with. Let's try another example. I am removing the can, and I will add another image, this time another woman. I am deleting this part, so now I have the woman from image one, then I add sit next to the woman from image two at a cafe, and I add the environment where I want them, so I select this empty table and mention like in image three, so it is clear where I want them to sit. You can have a lot of image references combined. Just make sure you tag them. Let's use five seconds this time and I will generate. After two minutes, I got the result. It seems that it decided the positions at the table from left to right. I mentioned image one first, so it put her on the left. At least that seems to be the logic. Hard to tell from a single try, but I think it did an okay job combining them. I have my logo on the window, and I can see their reflection in the window as well. Let me remove the prompt and all the attached images and show you how elements work. Instead of adding an image or video, we click on the Element button. Here, you have element presets you can pick. 
If you click on this assassin, you can see it is added here with a blue tag. Let's remove it and take a look at what these elements are. You can see it is a collection of images in different poses. In this case, a medium portrait and a full body. If I look at Einstein, it has front and back views. If I scroll down, you can see I have a front and side view. These help the AI see multiple angles of your subject, so it keeps it more consistent. But can you create your own elements? Let's click on My Elements, and you can see I don't have any. So let's click on the plus sign. In this window, we can build our element. It says a frontal image is required. So let's add this woman. It is almost a front view, so it should be good enough. Waiting for the upload to finish, and now we can add another one to three additional angles. Let me upload an image, this time a side view of the same woman. I use Nano Banana to get this. It is free to use in Google Wisk, but you can probably use O1 for that or Nano Banana Pro. I will add one full body as well. Now we need a name for it. Let's call it Purple Hair Woman. For the tag, I will select character in this case, but if you have a product or something else, select the right tag from here. For the description, I can use auto to get a description with AI. I think that should be enough. Let's click generate. Now we have our first element. I can click on it and you can see that blue tag is added specific to the element. Let's add a prompt after that. Our woman is walking on a street in Paris at golden hour, cinematic walk. I will generate now. And let's see what we got. It seems it kept our woman, the dress and all that, so you can create multiple elements to make it easier to add them into your scenes and create your videos. Let's try something more complex to see if it can do it. We add our element with the purple hair woman. Then with the left arrow key, I go before the tag and I type the woman from, and then that element comes up. Then I add that she wears the outfit from, and I add this steampunk outfit. After that, I say that she walks inside a moving train interior, like in the, and I upload another image with that train interior. So basically, our woman is wearing that outfit inside that train interior. Let's generate. So we combined an element that has multiple views of the woman with this dress and with this train. And we got our result. The result is pretty good. It is the same woman wearing the same outfit I selected inside that train. So it worked quite okay, I would say. What do you think? So to close the first chapter, here is how the prompt structure looks. We need a detailed description of elements, plus interactions or actions between elements, plus environment or background, plus visual directions like lighting and style. But I will add all the prompts from this video on Discord also, so you can easily download them for free. Moving to chapter two, reference video for actions. Now, instead of using only images, I will try to reference the animation or the woman from a video. First, I will upload an image of this woman wearing a sci-fi outfit, and for the prompt I will say, animate the woman from image one. Then I will add, with the same motion as the woman in the video, but I need to upload a video first. I have this video of a woman dancing. When I use a video, it seems to be a little more expensive, but let's click generate. Let me show you the video I want to use as reference. We will see if it can do it or not since it moves a little fast. By the way, you should know there are some limitations. You can upload seven images that are minimum 300 pixels and max 10 megabyte file size. For video, it only accepts three to 10 second videos, max 200 megabyte and max 2K resolution. When a video is present, you can upload up to four images or elements combined. Without a video, you can use seven. The pricing is cheaper when you don't use a video. That is why I use this video and spend the credit so you know what is worth it or not. Let's check the result. The hand motion and dance seem to be similar, just the face looks a little strange when it moves. It probably moves a bit too fast in my reference video. I will try again at the end of the tutorial with a slower video to see if it can do it better. I saw they said that you can reference the camera movement from a video, so I want to try that. I will say use, then upload an image and select this medieval image. Then I continue. So use image one as the first frame and apply the camera movement from, and I will select a blender camera movement of some cubes. Then I say to image one, this is the image I want to animate. 
In Blender, I screen recorded how I rotate the camera looking at the cubes. Let's check the results. I do have some camera movement, but it is not like in my video. So something didn't work right. I am wondering if it cannot see it because it didn't have a floor or something. I looked at their guide and they show an example with that prompt. And it seems to work better, even if it is not exactly the same camera motion as in the 3D render. So I am not sure what to say. Also another example they gave, but in their example it has multiple points and a floor, so maybe it can see the animation better. I tried to record another animation, this time with a floor and a cube similar to the base shapes of my image, but it still didn't follow the animation how I wanted. So I am not sure if the animation is the problem, but at least now you know it doesn't work very well, and you can avoid it if you don't want to spend too many credits. You can also reference a video to create the next shot or the previous shot. For example, I have a video of a woman running, and I want to create the next scene from a different angle. So I can say, based on video 1, generate the next shot, front view camera showing the woman running, and behind her is a bear chasing her. Then I click generate to see if it can do it. The original video looked like this, with a woman running on a bridge. And the result I got was this one. I was hoping for a more realistic bear, so I kind of got the next scene even if it comes with imperfections. It is worth playing with it, but you do not have much control, since it depends on what you prompt and what it can see in your reference video. Another useful use case is to change the subject in a video. I upload a video of a statue, then add the prompt, change the statue from video 1 to the statue from, and then I have an image of a kung fu master statue. Then I generate. This is the initial video, with a camera moving around a statue. It is a video from Italy. For the image, I have this statue isolated on white so it can see it better. And the result looks like this. It did a good job replacing the subject and can be quite useful. You can also change the background in a video. Just like we have Nano Banana for background replacement in images, we can do the same for video. I have this simple video of a woman, so let's see if we can change the background for it. For the background, I will say, change the background in video 1 with Grand Canyon at sunset. Or you can upload an image and use that image for the background. The result is pretty convincing. It does a good job at replacing backgrounds. So now you can take a video of yourself and make it look like it is somewhere else. You can also try to change the weather and environment. For example, I have a woman walking, and I will try to change the video to show the woman's feet walking on a rainy day, cinematic. The original video looks like this with that woman walking. Now let's see what we got. It is now in a rainy day, but it lost the realism I had in the video. I was hoping to keep the same look, but in the rain. Maybe I need better prompting, or the model cannot do it right. I did try with a 3D cartoon video, and it seems to get better results than with realistic ones. You can also recolor elements in your video. For example, I have an animation of a bunny, and I want to change the green t-shirt in video 1 that looks like this. You can see how it is walking wearing that t-shirt. Then I want to change it to purple. And let's see if it can get the color from an image, like this image with purple color. Let's generate. And I got the result. It successfully changed the color to purple, but it is not exactly my purple. It is only close to what I want, but the color was changed. But let's try something more complex, like swapping a subject. I have a video of a woman holding a pumpkin, and I also have an image of a creature. The woman's video looks like this, holding the pumpkin and looking at it, and I want it to be replaced with this creature. So let's prompt. Change the pumpkin from the woman's hand in video 1 to the creature from image 1, cute, adorable creature looking curious. And let's generate. The result looks quite good. I like it. It successfully replaced the pumpkin and brought that image of the creature to life, and the woman is holding it. We can also restyle a video. It seems to know many different art styles. I am uploading a woman video. It looks like this with a woman walking on the street. Then I prompt it like this, convert video 1 to a cyberpunk style, and I generate the video. Let's try something different. To the style of, and then I select an image, 
maybe the 3D bunny I had before. I am generating for that one as well. And let's try a Monet style to see if it can do it. Let's check what we got. For the cyberpunk style, I got this video. It looks pretty good. I wish it was more realistic, but anything fantasy and sci-fi sometimes can look more like an illustration. For the one where I added the image, it actually animated the bunny to walk like the woman instead of changing the style, so using images does not seem to work so well. And for Monet style, it looks nice, but it lost the face of the original woman. So try different styles to see what works. I was looking again at an example Kling AI posted, where they prompted to convert to video the animation of image one, and for them, it worked. So I am not sure what I did wrong. I did prompt a little differently. So let me prompt exactly like them. I can go to that video and click this edit button, and that will load the settings it had. I will use exactly the same prompt they used to see if it works, and I will generate again. Okay, that is interesting. I got the scene from the woman mixed with the bunny walking like the woman. I was hoping to change the style, so the model got more confused. I am not sure how they managed to get the style from the image, maybe it depends on the style. I tried another more complex prompt, but the result was still the same. It did not change the style of the woman, it got replaced with the bunny. Let's go back to the generation we did in chapter 2, the one where the woman danced too fast and the face got lost a little. I will go and edit this one so it loads the right files and prompt. I am deleting video 1 and I am uploading a video of a man dancing that is moving a little slower. I am adjusting the prompt to match the man in the video. You can see here how the man looks when he is dancing. It is a little slower. Let's generate to see if it works. And while it is generating, let's try something different with a bunny character since Kling AI is usually pretty good with animation. I am adjusting the prompt to match my reference image. I will generate again. And we have our results. For the woman, we have less face morphing, and it kind of got the emotion of the man on the face. For the bunny, I got this one that looks pretty good. For 3D animation, I got better results compared with realistic images. It depends on how fast it moves, and if the AI can keep up generating those changes fast enough. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help me make more tutorials. Thank you AI Titans for your support and thank you to everyone who subscribed to the membership. I wish you a great day and don't forget to check Discord for more resources.